Somehow we have bought into a shoebox full of fallacies. And one of them is that it's all right to be poor. Now that, that stems from your grand perennial group and, and my parental group. The remarks that I heard so persistently was that all I want is just enough to get by. And then the one that my generation used was, how's it going, man? I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. Making what? <laughs> the standstill syndrome of hold on has been the banner of black America since we were imprisoned in this country and culture. Survival was of the utmost importance. Just to live through was the theme of survival for the captured African. It became a fixed mechanism in the pseudo-culture that the African was developing in this, quote, foreign land, unquote. How to survive, the need to survive, the whole syndrome of survival is a slave mentality syndrome. Prosperity is the correct concept for the African, where most of the wealth of the planet has been drawn from. Most of the gold, most of the silver, most of the diamonds, rubies, emeralds, pearls, Africa that says the land from which we adhere is a rich land. Okay. A land flowing with milk and honey. That God's so-called chosen were sent to that land as a promised land. In W.E.B. Bobble's book, The Golden uh, Trade of the Moors, there's a recording of the tribe called the Imbutu, the lip disc culture in West Africa. The ones who took a small flat rock and placed in their mouths to stretch their lips as they grew because big lips had prestige in that cultural community. It, it literally stems from the vision of Mother Zudekaius, who appears with an enormous, gigantic pair of perfect lips. <laughs> they had so much gold, the legend was, before the European got into that territory that <clears throat> they could scoop it up off the top of the water with leaves but they had nothing to do with it, except to make things. Then the clever Arab found out a route into the territory where the Imbutu dwelt. And that's who took the European, thereby becoming from clock makers to cartographers, the map makers, the European Jew. That's the European Jew's map we're still using who found a route into that part of West Africa or around the Mediterranean Sea where the enormous spray of hot springs created a curtain of mist that you could not see through. The European was phobic about this area. They believed that if you went through this curtain, you would fall off the edge of the, of the uh, earth. So they were afraid to go. It was Leo Africanus who acted as the navigator who understood the implements of ship navigating that took so-called Prince Henry the navigator <laughs> and his European donkeys into that territory to trade the Imbutu gold for salt. The, the, the rocks cut their lips. And what they discovered is salt quickly healed those inner wounds. 
So they began trading large baskets and bags of salt for gold. They, the, the European would bring these big bags of salt and set them down then back up because they, they would not allow anyone to invade their privacy. They would wait, sometimes hours. They would come out, take the salt back, weigh it and fill an equal amount of gold for salt. Another picture, look at the so-called Egyptian, the African of Kemet and his and her culture, laced with gold, laced with silver and precious stones. The point I'm making is that you're from a rich culture, a rich past. It's back here, the idea to be rich, to be prosperous, to be well-to-do, okay? The illusion of poverty is just that. It is an illusion. In this cycle we are in of high dispensation, that includes wealth. You're supposed to get back something. Spiritual prosperity includes material prosperity. It includes mental prosperity. It doesn't exclude anything. The masters who presented themselves to a given people renounced material, materiality because they were demonstrating spirituality. They didn't need to harness and stack up anything. They could have anything they wanted when they wanted it. I'll, I'll give you a story of one master who so aptly displayed that. I won't give his name because I don't want to deal with who he is right now. Was took a group of his devotees down to the ocean and stood by the foot of the ocean and said to the ocean, well, here I am. You've called me down here. What do you want? <laughs> this was recently. I mean, in the last 20 years. And the ocean came up and washed his feet and then went back and it came back up and washed his feet again and that at, at, at his very big toe was this ancient necklace of large diamonds worth the exact amount it took to build the Hindu temple that his devotees wanted to build so he, he didn't need to carry anything around <laughs> he, he's in charge of everything down here that's real prosperity consciousness. To have what you need and want when you need it and when you want it. It is not having a large bank account because the bank owner might go off with your money. <laughs> In your consciousness, that's where prosperity is. The reason I'm mentioning this is because Many of you have a phobia about the idea of gambling. Well, well, so do I. This is not gambling. This is putting your silver tray out there so the creator can put stuff on it. <laughs> That's all it is. That's what I want you to see, view this as. Now, don't try to get to be a good gambler. All you want to do is to win. The only concept to keep in mind is to win. <laughs>